It was the first time that uh, people saw that their experience counted for something. And it's kind of remarkable when you think of it. A woman like that, a very accomplished woman, um, sitting down and, and listening to survivors, and not just listening, um, but acting on what she heard. It's accepted that we have to be at the table. And that, that's fairly remarkable. Well, I was elected to city council for the first time back in the 1970s, and it was at the height of the deinstitutionalization program being carried out by the uh, provincial government. So I saw a lot of this uh, firsthand in terms of people uh, moving from uh, that hospital situation into the community. It, w it was people trying to cope with uh, mental illness without the kind of supports that they needed. And uh, I, I felt we needed to do something. So when I became mayor in the 1980s, it then gave me an opportunity to move the agenda forward, and that's when I decided to create this uh, task force on discharge psychiatric patients. Reva Gerstein was uh, well known in the community in terms of her advocacy as a psychologist, as a, an educator. On that basis, uh, and her activist kind of attitude about it all, I uh, approached her. I think it was Jeff Ansel, uh, who was a reporter, who heard about the, the appointment of Riva Gerstein as the Mayor's Action Task Force, and uh, said, come with me, we'll go to the announcement. So I went there with him and uh, looked at Riva and thought, this is impossible. How can she possibly understand the kinds of lives people are forced to lead? We met a few weeks later, and she invited me to be on her task force. I remember a, 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 an article in the Globe. I always called it Beauty and the Beast, so Reva's picture was here, and the front page of my picture was here, right? And it, it was such an unlikely alliance. I think the first time I ever saw Reva, I knew she was on the task force. She had this one person task force and then she was convinced uh, by a number of people to expand it beyond that. And she came into Park and there was a meeting to hear from psychiatric survivors. I had seen people come in who were social workers who were frightened. They just couldn't handle the chaos. Not Reva. She walked in, she went to where she was supposed to be, and then she just, she dealt with everybody with an incredible amount of respect. We'd go back to uh, Park where I was uh, working at the time and say, Paul, this woman, everybody gets to talk. I felt quite confident after a while that this was going to be fairly spectacular. The key recommendations that came from Dr. Gerstein uh, and her committee uh, were uh, the need for housing. Housing was a very key need. Uh, uh, dealing with homelessness uh, just uh, was a crisis situation. A lot of that ended up coming together in the Gerstein Crisis Center. It seemed like a daunting challenge uh, because nothing like this had ever been done before. And the, the, the expectations of the community were huge. I remember walking through this place when, and smelling the lumber. And uh, I remember picking up a big nail and thinking, I'm gonna keep this. We didn't actually open the center till February of, of 1990. And we got to sort of set it up the way we wanted to set it up, respectful of individuals and their right to make choices and decisions around how their crisis got uh, managed. I think Pat was on the hiring committee when we hired uh, a large number of the original staff. I was part of the team when the center first opened. It was really exciting, it was something new, it was um, uh, innovative, cutting edge approach to mental health. Her vision was to create a holistic, client-centered approach, having the individual um, in crisis um, help in planning 
um, how to alleviate some of the stress in their life and how to um, meet their goals. We only had 10 beds for the entire city of Toronto for everyone that might need them and everybody wanted them and everyone wanted uh, priority access. To me, that was the biggest hurdle and getting the staff to learn because they had to learn on the job because nobody else had done this before. Reva would sit there and tell you that the most important thing you need to do when you're working with people who are in crisis is to listen listen to what they're saying and making sure you're hearing what they're saying and what they need. I think my identity is just to be um, true to myself and that it wasn't in vain, those things that I did go through, you know, growing up in New York and and the background that I had by, you know, family members being gay and affiliated and dealing with drugs. It was for a purpose and for a reason. And I don't think I would have recognized that if I didn't get the opportunity that the Gerstein uh, gave me. The most important thing that it did, it helped me to know that if I could truly be authentic, that people would see um, through that and give me an opportunity I left Syria because uh, my uh, my son has leukemia. I can here uh, take uh, my son hospital. I can check uh, my son. I can see my son is good. I know this is a Christian center. This is good for uh, meeting people. I uh, here uh, favorite for people. People have hospitality. Yeah. Um, I think it's had a strong effect on survivors in the city. They now know there's one place they can go where they don't have to go through a, a big psychological testing to get in. They don't have to do anything more than say, this is what's happening to me right now and I'm having trouble managing it and I need help. And I think that says a lot for Reva's vision of, of the place. It's really been an honor to work with her. If you have gone through what we've gone through, and you've come out intact, your sense of humor, your caring about community, your uh, wish to make things better, that is as valid as a paper PhD that someone has. She has said that uh, the survivor community, uh, she feels is her legacy, which is pretty cool. This has helped thousands of people over the years, thousands of people to have a better life in this city. And that's something that Reva Gerstein and all the people that have worked here and, and, and myself feel quite proud of. So a lot has been done. The Gerstein, part of it was a very key milestone. You know, the other thing she can be very proud of is that she has reached a, a milestone age. So let me just uh, wish her a happy birthday on, on this occasion, a happy 100th birthday. <laughs>